Is it about? They're about, yeah, same. they're about the same. Karim, Karim, so it's true. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Irvin Akwilin, what's your assessment of the situation that Clyde finds itself in at the moment? Well, I think we find ourselves actually in a very interesting position. Naturally, after the elections to Cardiff, to the Assembly, and morale was a little bit low for a day or two. But then suddenly realised you know, what's happening at the UK level, also in Scotland, and also, for instance, the new government in London saying we're going to have a common stock commissioning for Wales. Um, you know, there's a whole series of things coming up which uh, really lift our morale tremendously because we can see the way ahead over the next year or two, we're going to work hard. But in fact, we've always led in Wales, your client company, with thought leadership. And I think it's a great opportunity to continue doing that over the coming years. And the review that you're undertaking, you've obviously started work on that. What sort of shape is it taking so far? Well, I mean, it's, it's early days because August is a, is a tricky month, of course. So I've been around, we are speaking to various uh, constituency committees and so on. But we've got a work plan uh, and we'll be getting that underway now. We aim to produce our report uh, before the end of this year because I think it's important we get a move on with it. And uh, we're going across Wales talking not just to party members, by the way, but to people from other parties, people from the business community uh, and, and wider afield as well. But a disappointing result for the party in May. I mean, what are the things it needs to do next to, to, to bounce back from that? Well, I don't want to prejudge that now. That's the idea of this consultation, of course, to listen to our membership, to listen to others as well, our friends outside the party, uh, to come to some conclusions. But clearly, um, I, I think there are some clear things we need to do. I think we need, for instance, to map out our constitutional plans more clearly. Um, I think it's interesting that, in many ways, public opinion in Wales is ahead of the parties now. Things like borrowing powers, fair funding, uh, the decentralisation of the justice system to Wales and so on. Public opinion, according to opinion polls, is ahead of all the political parties. So that's a great opportunity for us to get back again and to lead that debate. So the implication of what you're saying is that some of the party's policies are popular, but the party itself isn't doing as well as it might? Um, I think it's probably fair to say that. Yes, I don't think we have been as effective. I think maybe, using hindsight, now, you know, for the last four years we've been coalition government in Cardiff Bay and maybe a little bit too much of our focus was on uh, the National Assembly here in Cardiff. We tended to neglect, I wouldn't want to overstate this, to neglect the party in the country. And some of your party members are quite keen for, for, for markers to be set down, shall we say, at the conference. There are motions at your party conference on independence, on whether to work with other parties or not, for instance. How will those decisions uh, work their way into your review? Well, obviously we'll see how the debate goes in conference next week. Uh, I'll listen to those very carefully, but I think the party would be rather unwise if it tied itself down too much now to some specifics on certain issues such as collaboration with other parties when the next election is you know, almost five years away. And sorry about this, I'll ask the question again because when it goes out the conference will be a couple of days away rather than next week, so I'll just sorry. ask again. That's alright, no. Uh, some of your party members keen to, 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 to set some markers down, should we say, at the conference with motions on independence and whether to work with other parties or not. How, how will they work their way into the policy review? Well, we listen to what they say in conference and what conference decides, obviously, very carefully. Personally, I think the party would be a, a little bit unwise to tie itself down too specifically to some tactical things now when the next elections for the National Assembly are almost five years away. And uh, what lessons are there to learn, if any, from your sister party in Scotland, the SNP, who had some great electoral success in the last few years? Well, Scotland is quite different from Wales. For instance, if you look at the way they get their political messages, if you like, through the media, there's a much stronger Scottish media than there is a uh, Welsh one in, here in Wales. That's, that's a challenge for us. Having said that, you know, various times we've inspired the SNP and they've inspired us. We work very closely together. Uh, certainly, uh, I spent a lot of time with them in London when, in, in the <laughs> parliamentary party, and as part of our exercise, um, I'll be going up to Edinburgh to talk to my friends at the SNP. And uh, a leadership contest is almost underway within Plaid Cymru. What, uh, what, do you, what would you like to see the new leader do, uh, whoever he or she may be? Well, clearly what we want is, uh, I mean, Jan did a terrific job, but we want uh, a new, fresh leader now, so we need uh, strong leadership, I think. Uh, we also need the person to raise the profile of the party further. And I think uh, also, it's not just the leader, though. I think we need to make sure our machinery is uh, more effective than it's been in recent times. Um, maybe, again, as I said, we put a little bit too much energy focus on the National Assembly and not enough on the party in the country. And at the end of the day, you know, as Plaid Cymru has always led political thought in Wales for the last 20 or 30 years or more, we need to get back into that fourth leadership position again.